It has now been confirmed by Elon Musk himself that the design of Tesla's Cybertruck has been finalized, and production will begin within the next year at Giga Texas. And the saga of the Cybertruck might be coming to an end soon. There has never been a vehicle release that has been as anticipated, talked about, argued over, or speculated about as this one always has been. The amount of hype surrounding this car is unlike anything you've ever seen from any other manufacturer. So, you want to learn more about the final Cybertruck prototype? Stay tuned until the end. There is no doubt that Elon Musk has made the ugliest and most brutal looking vehicle as possible. But it is either loved or hated by the people. Interestingly, despite having unveiled three years ago, there have never been any production units on the road. That polarization appears to be keeping this vehicle relevant nearly three years after its introduction. Regardless of who you are, everybody believes something about the Cybertruck. The design was finalized by Elon Musk, but he did not say what it entails, so many questions remain unanswered. Here's our video gathering all the information we know about Tesla's Cybertruck as well as shedding light on some things we don't know. According to Elon Musk, in a recent interview with members of Tesla's owner, Silicon Valley and Kilowatts, the final design of the Cybertruck is, for sure, locked. Elon then looked both contemplative and a little bit sorrowful as he explained that the guys in the room kind of got carried away when they were asked about features, and he just nodded like that. After Tesla engineers knew the truck would be delayed for at least another year, if not more, they turned their attention to improving and adjusting its original blueprint. As a result of emerging trends in the electric pickup market, such as the use of four motors rather than three. Furthermore, adding rear-wheel steering would have required a complete redesign of the subframe and electronic architecture. Elon also lamented that even if they had a finalized Cybertruck in the works last year, they wouldn't have been able to build it because of the semiconductor shortage. Then, Elon said there was a big shortage of chips, so even if they had been available, it wouldn't have mattered. He continued by saying that Tesla even stopped making stationary storage products and starved their power wall line to make cars. Despite this, they were unable to make all of the cars they wanted due to a lack of chips. At Elon's Cyber Rodeo in April, he discussed the fact that the introduction of a new vehicle can result in a decrease in overall vehicle production because of the complications. Thus, by making Cybertrucks, they would have been unable to manufacture Model Y and Model 3 vehicles. This equation is already way out of balance because of the supply and demand for these cars. As things stand, Tesla does not have enough Model Ys to meet demand. The waiting list is at least a year long, so if production volume were to decline, it would be a catastrophe. Eventually, Elon says, Tesla switched directly from chip constrained to a Shanghai factory shutdown. Since then, they weren't able to access Chinese-made parts. This harmed the manufacturing process in California as well as in Shanghai. Additionally, Elon said he wasn't sure everyone understood the severity of the Chinese shutdowns and it hasn't been completed yet. However, it is still bumpy and hasn't received a major green light. In an interview, Elon is asked when his Cybertruck will go into production, and without hesitation, he answers that he thinks it will hit the market in the middle of next year. Last but not least, Elon says that he will be driving a Cybertruck daily once it comes out, which is quite a leap from what he normally drives. Next. We want to know if we have seen the finished design of the Cybertruck. This is because several prototypes have been seen, some newer than others, but none of them have been completed. Looks more like a finished product. Tesla continues to release very prototypes from time to time, which are the most finished looking. In New Orleans, Tesla displayed it at a conference about computer vision and pattern recognition, so it hasn't been mothballed. During the mid-June Michigan International Speedway, we also saw the latest Cybertruck prototype. In its last sighting, the updated prototype was notable for not having windshield wipers. As for Elon Musk's laser-based window cleaning system, which sounds amazing, at first, we thought he would come up with something new. Upon further thought, it probably wouldn't be legal, reliable, or even safe to blast lasers directly into someone's eyes from behind a windshield. It then occurred to us that there might be some sort of electromagnetic system utilizing blades of ultra-low profile. A giant monolithic arm rigged up by Tesla looked ridiculous and prompted Elon Musk to issue a Twitter response saying that the wiper concerns him the most, adding that, ideally, a deployable wiper that stows in the front of the trunk would be ideal, but it would be extremely complicated. 
In light of this, it begs the question of whether the deployable wipers made it into the final design. Only one iteration of the long wiper has been shown to date, and it somehow manages to even be more ridiculous than the long one. Prototypes of these Cybertrucks have also shown some glimpses of updated interiors. Compared to the original design, this is one of the biggest differences. At first glance, the interior of the Cybertruck looked like the plain marble dashboard modeled after Model 3. After Tesla explained that the marble appeared to be composited together from recycled papers, it was made of recycled paper. I thought it was pretty cool, but the prototype we are seeing just looks like a model's interior, only sharper. Compared to the original build, this cluster is present now in front of the driver and it looks the same as the Model S and X design, with just more definition around the edges. There is also a hole where the airbag should be on Tesla's standard steering wheel yoke, as well as wires coming out of it. Aside from the pedals, some interesting things are going on. They're almost exactly like the Model S. Then, Cybertruck prototypes featured middle seats in the front rows, in the middle section. There used to be an abundance of these in pickup trucks, but no longer. Tesla seems determined to bring it back. A large, bulky center console thing appears to fold up underneath the new prototype to reveal a middle seat, and the middle can be opened up a bit more with some room for legroom. It isn't much, but there might be a bit more room. Tesla can refine the square box sitting underneath the display screen if they decide to. Cybertrucks are all about what is happening beneath the surface, what's going on in the inside, and specifically, what types of motors will be used in this quad motor design. Could they be the same carbon-wrapped high-performance motors that were used in the Plaid system? According to a user, this is his case. When he examined the Plaid motor in his teardown of the Tesla Model S, Sandy said he expected this same motor to be used in the Cybertruck since it has significantly higher power than the standard electric motor used in Tesla Models 3 and Model Y. Now, let's talk about the battery pack. Can the top-tier Cybertruck reach a range of over 500 miles as originally claimed? I don't think so. It seems that Elon has lost interest in making long-range batteries. He says that no one needs more than 400 miles of range, so why sacrifice the vehicle design to get a pointless feature? It is yet to be seen if the 4680 battery cell can survive a long distance test. Will Tesla switch to a higher voltage electrical system? During Tesla's first quarter's earning call, Drew Baglino explained that the higher voltage won't be used for the Model 3 and Y since the benefits would be minimal, if not insufficient to justify the expense and effort. It is also possible that Tesla could switch to an 800-volt architecture, similar to what Porsche and Audi use. The 9,000-ton Gigapress from IDRA will certainly not be enough for a finalized Cybertruck build. Earlier this month, IDRA headquarters in Italy hosted an open-house event featuring the largest die-casting machine in the world. This means that the press will be deconstructed, trucked to a port city, loaded onto a boat, floated across the sea, and trucked to Austin, Texas to be reconstructed and then, and only then, can Tesla start building a real Cybertruck. Put in six months of hard work to get tooling and production systems running by the end of this year, if we imagine the Gigapress is up and running by them. Are you excited about the final Cybertruck prototype? We'd love to hear what you think. Kindly react in the comments and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like this video.